Hello students, welcome to the YouTube channel Easy Learning. In this session, you are going to learn Data Abstraction Chapter 2. Important contents you are going to learn in this session are Rational Numbers, List, Tubules. Data Abstraction You know very well that to define an abstract data type, we need the collections of constructors and selectors. Data abstraction means providing only the essential things and hiding the detailed procedures that is said to be data abstraction. That data abstraction concept is supported by abstract data type. To define an abstract data type, we need constructors and selectors. Constructors create an object. Selectors extract individual pieces of information from the object. Both the constructors and the selectors are functions. Up to this level, you have learned in your previous video. I hope you remember that. Okay. For creating an abstract data type in our program, that should contain two parts. What are they are? The part that operates on abstract data and the part that defines a concrete representation. So, we are going to see what is this concrete representation and what is the link between this and the abstract data type. See the example of representation of abstract data type for rational numbers. So, before defining the abstract data type, we must know what is a rational number. Rational number is nothing but it is a fractional number. So, you know, for example, take the number 8 by 3 or 19 by 23. All these kind of numbers are fractional numbers. It will have a numerator and a denominator. In this example, 8 is the numerator and 3 is the denominator and this is the result of the fraction. Am I right? This is a mathematical thing. Now, we are going to implement this concept in our abstract data type concept. As you know, to define an abstract data type, we need constructor and selector. Constructor is a function. Selector is also a function. Here, constructor name is rational and it is having two parameters, n and d. Selector or numer of x, denom of y. Now, you have the operations on rational numbers defined in terms of the selector functions numer and denom. And the constructor function rational. I hope you understand this. But you have not yet defined these functions. What is the meaning of this line is? I didn't define the numer and denom. But I am saying that this numer of x function is going to return the numerator of the rational number x. And denom of y is going to return the denominator of the rational number y. Because we are constructing based on the imagination. Is it clear children? Why you need is, sorry, what you need is some way to glue together the numerator and the denominator into a compound value. That means we are framing the concept with the constructor and the selector. We are saying that Rational is a constructor function and it is going to have two parameters. And enumer, numer of x and denom of y are selector functor, functions and it is going to return the numerator of rational number. We are saying these things. But we didn't define the exact implementation of these two selectors. So, this up to this level it is said to be abstract data type. And this methodology of program designing is said to be wishful thinking. We have not yet 
set how a rational number is represented or how the constructor and the selector should be implemented. This kind of program designing is said to be visual thinking because visual code is a code that calls function that do not yet exist. That means up to this it is not defined but for the completion it should be defined later. Is it clear children? Now, have some idea about the abstract data type and the concrete data type. So, abstract data type independent of its implementation. You know this point. We have discussed only this point yet. Next point is, they are just ideas called black boxes with a defined behavior. So, they are all the ideas. To implement them, you have to choose a suitable concrete data type. Is it clear? So, come to the concrete data type. Implementations of a relatively simple concept. First point. They are the implementations of a relatively simple concept. Then, they are basic data structures typically provided by the computer language. So, they are the basic data structures. In concrete data representation, a definition for each function is known. So, to build the abstract data type, I should know the concrete data type that are the basic structures provided by the computer language. If I am using C++ means I should know about C++. As our syllabus is for Python, here we are going to discuss what is in Python regarding the concrete data types. Why we are learning the concrete data type means based on this only we are going to build our abstract data type. Enable us to implement the concrete level of our data abstraction, Python provides a compound structure called pair, which is made up of list or tubule. Both the list and the tubule are a data type coming under the category of pair, which is a concrete level of data in Python. Now we are going to see in detail about list and the tubule data structure. Actually, it is a very interesting concept. Do you remember the word array in C++? Can you see a sweet box? With, uh, with This box is containing only one kind of sweet because I want to represent the array as collection of similar data types. Then what about list? On seeing this, can you guess the difference? Same suite, different types of suites. So, collection of different data types. Then what about this? It's also collection of different data types, but they are all packed. So, I want to implement a concept here. List and tubules both are same. Collection of different type of data that is simply said to be collection of different data types list changeable, tubules unchangeable, array collection of similar data type. Do you remember the array in your C++? If not, I will recall it. So list. List is constructed by play, placing expressions within square brackets. Can you see the example my list? It's a user-defined variable. You can use any any variable here. Equal. Within the square bracket, I have to say all the data in that list. 10, 30, 1. There is another example. Here there is a word. That is string collection of characters. And a float number because it is 3.14. Then an integer number because it is not having any decimal points. 10. Again, again, there is a list here, 2,4,6 within a square bracket. So, these are the possibilities what I can do with the list. That means, list can store multiple values. More than one value can be stored in list. And what type of value can a list store? A list can store any type of value. That means, it can be a combination of integer, float, string, 
even another list can be a member of this list is it clear is it interesting am i right because you know array collection of similar data type but you are going to learn a list i can hold any type of data in one name is it interesting right just like our array the list also fetched in the same pattern how our array is fetched in c++ through the index value do you remember same thing list 10 20 the 10 is the data value 20 is the data value 10 data value is fetched through the index value of 0 because the index value is always starts with 0 and the 20 data value is fetched through the index value 1 look here here list 10 comma 20 but there is another assignment x comma y equal to list that means the first variable x hold the first value of 10 second variable y holds the second value of the list 20 that means x equal to 20 y equal to 20 this also possible this methodology also possible in list below given the mathematical representation of list that means a list is a combination of a index value and a data type data value so 0 index value data value is 10 1 index value data value is 20 this concept is said to be pairing because of this facility list is coming under the concept of pair it is also a book back question come to tubules tubules are same similar to list then what is the difference two difference one in syntax is there in the list i have to use square bracket here parenthesis second chain second difference is list can be change that means i can change the element in the list but in the tubules i cannot change that is the difference apart from that all are equal here nums 1 comma 2 that mean nums of index value 0 is having the data value 1 nums of index value 1 is having the data value of 2 is it clear children you are going to learn list tubules string in elaborate in coming chapters so we know very well that list is a collection of different data types but imagine a situation handling complex data like a person's detail that means i need a person first name last name his id email address sometimes for contact number i can have anything like that so in that time of situation if i want to handle the data using list means i have to create a list name here the list name is person as i can say it is a list because of the square bracket if it is in parenthesis then it will be a tubule here it is a list so first data badmashri it's a first name and the last name data and the id and the email address have given i can represent a detail in a list like this but there is a practical problem here representation does not explicitly specify what each part represents meaning is i cannot tell the user that the first index value 0 is a first name second index value 1 is a last name by giving such kind of instruction is not easy and it is not advisable also so how to overcome this problem here comes the solution for this problem instead of using a list you can use the structure construct to represent multi part objects where each part is named that means instead of giving the index number as 0 1 2 3 i can label a name here how it is possible only through class do you remember your class objects in c++ same concept they are defining a class class name and they are creating a function name with the name creation and the data members same structure what you learnt in the c++ 
person class name the member function is creation and the data members or the variables are field name last name id email the person is referred to as a class while p1 is referred to as an object you know that to access the content in a class we must create a object is it clear children data abstraction abstract data type concrete data type abstract data type and the usage then the list tubules their difference then the need of class construct in the abstract data type concept therefore we can define a class as bundled data and function that works on that data for all the above example and explanation one can conclude the beauty of data abstraction is that we can treat complex data in a very simple way that means creating a class concept to handle the complex data is the main point of data abstract data type in python is it clear children thank you for watching this video Sub if you like this video subscribe this channel to watch the upcoming videos in the description box i have given the video link for the part 1 of data abstraction view that also learn the lesson easily all the best thank you have a good day